access to it. Anyone who hasn't attended can have access to it. So welcome. I am excited to meet you and host this moment, um, share the energy in, um, in uplifting each other and, you know, um, and creating uh, different outcomes for our lives. I'm Tatiana Judiez, as you probably uh, figured it out by now, and I am an executive advisor and coach, a consultant and speaker. I serve high performance leaders, teams and organizations with transformative core energy principles to transcend the formula for success. So it's basically working with high performance individuals or teams and finding the next level with them, with um, with those principles that can that can really uplift uplift them. So I create more alignment with them, and and the purpose is really to find more of an impactful meaning for them, to um, create intentional relationships and purpose purpose driven financial results for for all. So that all of that is in in alignment. I work with Collective Gain because. Um, I really love their name. For one, their name to me means exactly what I'm doing this for. I'm, I'm contributing a little bit of my genius, a little bit of my energy um, to add to the collective. And with this platform and this group, um, we are all collectively working to create a better world around us with whatever little amount of genius we each have. So it's a beautiful platform. I am going to, to, to dive into this, um, this information and this expertise as to what is genius, what is your, gen your own genius zone, how you can support it, expand it. Um, and the, the, if you have any questions, please, please feel free to uh, you know, have, have them written in the chat box. I will not address them right away. I will address them after. But I do invite you to feel really free to um, write it all as it comes to you. And then we'll go back to it because we do have time. So did I forget anything and what I really want to, uh, to, to say before we start? Um, yeah, I think this is a workshop. So I think it really matters that you bring as many either questions or comments or um, guidance that you would like to receive. Um, this is for you. So let's dive into um, how to remain in your genius zone amid chaos. I chose this particular subject because, well, for one, it's a very obvious reason because we are all experiencing the same thing right now. We're all facing uncertainty. We're all facing chaos. We're all facing um, challenges that are coming to the surface. We're facing ourselves. We're fa facing our companies, our businesses, um, our relationships. We're facing everything right now. And this is, I believe in that the virus and this pandemic has forced the, the, glo the globe to go into a pause to do exactly that because our systems and the people in the systems are not functioning well. It is, I mean, that's a common denominator. It is not working. It is not functioning. So we're all right now facing what we choose to face because there are a lot of people that are not choosing to face what comes up. I mean, Vicky, I love the fact that you are realizing that amongst this chaos, you need to, to fill yourself up. It's like, it's like you have your own cup to fill and that comes before we can fill it for others. We need to take care of ourselves. So this um, particular workshop is really, its intention is to show you that number one, we each have a genius. Every single one of us has a genius and can create a genius zone in which we flow, in which we feel like we are in full alignment between our purpose, our being, our action, and we lose sense of time, we lose track of details, and we seem to rise to this level or to this cloud where nothing else matters. And I think we've all experienced that moment, whatever, whatever you're doing in that moment, I think that that, that is where we, we can reach our genius. 
but where does genius come from? I mean, genius is really, is really, um, I went too fast in my, in my slide. Genius is really um, an ability to access energy. And so how did I want to show you this type of, of fundamental principles or, or even some kind of tangible proof that it does exist is I went to, um, to a book and to the research that this, um, that this uh, Dr. Hawkins has made for us. He published it finally in 2012, but it was, it's, it's representing 50 years of his research. And what he does in this particular book, and, and which actually Power Versus Force, which is the title of his book, which is exactly the, um, the proof that certain core energy fields are able to be measured in, in terms of frequency. So he's actually making the intangible that has been you know, treated as a lot of people, um, as a lot of our society does, we, we, we treat energy as a woo-woo word. We, tr we tend to make this, um, this type of, of energy word become um, something spiritual when it, it's not really about that. It's just that I think society has developed a fear around what is considered spiritual versus religious versus energy like um so he's able in his in his study to demonstrate that there is there are levels of human consciousness that are measured in frequency and so the way he does that is that he actually um, uses muscle response in people uh, which is which is called um, applied kineology, kineology, I can't pronounce that word, I'm French and sometimes it comes back up, <laughs> kineziology, phew, said it. Um, so through that method, which is muscle testing, not very well known, but very much used by a lot of people, um, he's able to differentiate what is death, or force, or life supporting, or actually, sorry, the opposite of life supporting. So death or force to, which is a detriment to life, to what is considered power or love, or, and I mean, the top, top level is enlightenment, which, you know, I don't believe that a lot of us have gone to this stage yet anyways maybe this will be a, a, a phase in our lives where we could possibly attain enlightenment but he's been able to demonstrate that the def different levels of consciousness have a tangible um, measurement in frequency so these levels of consciousness have he's determined that they have through their energy this far-reaching effect i mean it is a question of of um, actually the, the, the typical um, comment that we, uh, not comment, but um, there is a quote that everybody knows by now. Um, it's not about you know, what you say, but it's about what you make people feel. How do you, people re remember you because of the way you make them feel. Not the word specifically, but there is, a, there is so far an intangible way that we feel when we are around certain people. Why do you believe that some people are more credible and trustworthy than others? Why are some politicians, no, no need to name any, but why are some, some politicians um, creating the result and through their influence that they are creating? I mean, it's not by complete coincidence. There is something that they do that they own in terms of their energy that they create in terms of effect in others that specifically can be through this um, study measured and also felt by others so in his levels of consciousness or in his um in his uh, barometer if you want force which is at the very bottom of the scale meaning it's the equivalent to death. It's very close to fear, actually. 
So he's determined that every um, level of consciousness below 200 is considered to be life destructive and anything above is, is supporting life, is actually amplifying and exp expanding life. It's about empowerment. It's about uh, what he calls an energy attractor. So basically by using this level of energy, you can activate um, someone's reaction. You can create in people different experiences in yourself of course, to begin with, but also in, in terms of what you give to others. So what's really important to understand here is genius is not, um, it's not a personality, a personality style. It is not specifically a gift that, um, you know, you, you've been born with that has um, particular attachment to your intellectual uh, level, to your, I, uh, to your IQ. It is the ability to have access to what makes you unique combined with these different energy levels of consciousness and so that's why when we call when we actually use the term genius zone it's because it's a, the it's the merge of genius which is really what makes you unique so you have to really figure out what is it about you that makes you unique and we all have it. I mean, we all have a very unique quality to who we are that is a gift to others. How we combine that with these levels of consciousness is really our ability to have access to higher levels of consciousness. So the negative frequencies weaken life. I mean, you can see that this pandemic this time of chaos, this virus is forcing us to pause so that we take accountability of what in the governments, what in our companies, what in our lives, what in our personal relationships, what is there that is weakening us, what is there that needs to change, and what is there that needs to be expanded. So it's a personal, um, it's a personal time to really use this, these revelations to move beyond, be able to pivot with it and make it um, work for you. And I am not at all discounting the fact that through all of this, there are people who are losing their jobs, um, losing revenue. Um, I think we all are somehow um, very conscious of that and we are extremely empathetic to, um, to what's happening to others around us. So it's really important that I'm, I, don't, um, I don't come across as though I'm discounting the terrible experiences that some people are are living, including losing their, their loved ones. But I am saying that we have a choice and we need to remember that choice every day as to how we want to come out of this. What, do, what does the world look like in our opinion as we come out and how are we going to contribute? How are we going to individually contribute so that the collective gains which is um, a beautiful um, reference to to our group collective gain and so that we we add a little bit of our two cents so that we live in a world that we wish to live in you know it's it's important to understand that we we have this responsibility so you know by now that chaos is the result of this feeling of fear in fact, chaos is based in fear. So when we feel like we are in chaos, we feel we actually are feeling fear. And fear is by far such, such a contagious energy field. Even though it's very low on the energy scale, it's at 100, it's still fairly low, but it has this capacity to grab you. And when you're grabbed by fear, 
and you are in you are standing in that energy in that emotion that oftentimes is really unconscious for a lot of people you are unable to feel resourceful to feel empowered and to feel as though you have choices all of a sudden it feels like you're powerless you just look around and you don't even have access to your own intellectual tools to move beyond that you're as though you're paralyzed i mean that's the extreme in fear um we know that fear is the base for oppressive regimes for some even for some policy it's also a tool for some politicians to rule by dominance and not by power power being on the other side of the, the other spect end of the spectrum which is um a sense of empowerment when we're in the presence of these people who have power true power authentic power based in something else and fear we also know that um, fear is a great tool for a lot of marketing uh, strategies to grab market share for instance so we all have used fear as well as a, a tool to gain um, either market share to gain um, influence on people through authority which is which is one of the ways in leadership that is being revealed right now that it doesn't work fear-based authority um, in leadership is is not effective it doesn't make you feel like you are trusted and doesn't make you feel like you're elevated in 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 any shape or form it creates a lot of shame as well um, the energy f level of shame is 20 i mean can you imagine 20 shame is one of the um consequences of low, low self-esteem it's it's um aligned with cruelty it's aligned with introversion and it's one of those emotions that in my opinion is even more paralyzing than fear because it goes deeply into who you are and it attacks every part of you as as lower than right so it's um it's also linked to um narcissistic personalities i mean we can go on and on it's it's just one of those emotions and energy field that is considered passive suicide that's what shame is all about um and of course as we all know uh, brune brown has amazing work on shame and and guilt and which are all fear-based as well uh, we have apathy which is another um another uh, energy field that is completely um useless since it doesn't lead to any any change any any fullness it doesn't change it doesn't lead to any um driven action of any sort it just is that that um very um level um uh, bar of of consciousness and of course we have anger and anger is really interesting because anger can is even though it's at 150 um it still can be an energy of either destruction or or, or um some we could call it construction it's it can go either way in 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 people anger can be channeled to create amazing results it can be channeled to um lead to breakthroughs in relationships when you know typically a, 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 an angry person in a relation in an intimate relationship will have to face what that anger you know is is revealing and in anger is like fire it's a very revealing energy if you choose to use it to your best advantage if you don't and if you run from it and you don't um decide to use it 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 continues to destroy it doesn't lead to anything more it leads to much more that is less actually for yourself and the relationship um, and of course we've got hatred and confusion and hopelessness falsehood i mean all of these um words i am sure are eluding for you of various um people around you 
that are either maybe your bosses, your collaborators, your teammates, uh, persons in relationships um, you've been with. Um, it can allude to parents. It can allude to a lot of feeling that you have sensed and a lot of um, levels of consciousness that you've either tapped into yourself or have been forced to tap into people around you. Basically, it was those experiences you've encountered within yourself being next to people like that, people in those different energy fields. Um, the core energy energetic principles that are um, that are in fact uplifting and have this lasting effect is as as the study shows us is is anything that is beyond 200 and so as we continue to explore the 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 various levels of consciousness through this study we see and know that love is way more powerful than hatred we we all know that right it is a great um it is still a great theory that a lot of people don't understand can be applied in their leadership in their day-to-day -day life in the way that they choose to influence others and that's what powerful truly means whenever it's powerful is because you are not only feeling powerful inside, but you know that you're creating an experience in the other person or your team or your family that is felt in the same way that you feel. Truth sets us free. We all know that whenever someone has spoken their truth, it's so freaking liberating to feel someone is speaking vulnerably which is another uh, great challenge for a lot of leaders to speak vulnerably to to really tell us how they are experiencing their truth because truth let's remember that truth is a big word and your truth and my truth are different there is a level of general truth but generally um truth is a very personal experience so your truth is very different than my truth or his truth or her truth and with empathy which is um, which is um leveled at a very high range in in the levels of consciousness empathy really enables us to relate to someone's truth and really feel as though we are liberated when someone speaks their truth forgiveness same thing i mean it sounds really obvious everybody knows that forgiveness is needed in in recovering from trauma and moving on and rising to 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 the next level however it's not an easy task to be um to be forgiving yet again it liberates and courage is so empowering because it is felt by others when someone next to you is full of courage how do you feel you you intrinsically feel their courage and it somehow makes you feel a little bit more courageous maybe not to their level maybe not to their extent but somehow it's like it's contagious same thing it's it's like you feel it right and again we go back to how people make you feel versus what they say to you behavior and energy fields well energy fields drive behavior and behavior is by someone is what really is, um, will influence you or anyone um, to the to that that is matched to your intention so let me rephrase that because i don't think that was clear basically when you intend to create an experience in other by a feeling you want them to have and you want to inspire them you, that's influence as well you need to have an your intention to step into courage or step into love or forgiveness or truth in order to not only feel it yourself but in order for that 
person to experience it in, in that way. Um, so what is life supporting? Um, what are those life supporting energy fields? They are acceptance. They are, um, well, let me go back to acceptance. So acceptance is of the energy level of 350. Acceptance is the only way for anyone to take responsibility for what is going on in their life. It is the exact opposite of victimhood. Because, and, and because when you are feeling like a victim, you are feeling actually as though you're fearful. You are in shame, you are in fear, and you drop back to a very low level of, of energy. So acceptance is, is really that, um, that first step in rising to a different level to reach courage, to, lead, to, to reach love, to reach peace, to reach joy. It's, it, leads, it, leads, sorry, it leads to pivoting. If you weren't accepting right now that there is chaos in your life, and that, um, and if you weren't accepting some of the challenges that are coming up to, to the surface for you, whatever they are, if you weren't accepting those, you wouldn't be able to get to the next level and go, okay, now I need to do something about this. I need to see what kind of resources I have that I can use to pivot. So acceptance is the first step. And it's, it's a huge, um, it's a huge, um, not only it's, it's higher up in the energy field of consciousness, but it's just one of, it's a decision to make, to, to accept and move on. Courage is 200. Courage is, is, I mean, it's linked to determination and fortitude. And as you know, right now, you need to have courage. Everyone has to have courage right now to face what's facing, what we are all facing, and to even for some go out to shop um, for groceries, to use courage to um, get to the, to the next um, opportunity to perhaps give more of ourselves in order to um, contribute to this moment. So courage is, is that energy field that um, I think enables us to receive even more. Because when you, when you have courage, you go out there and you go beyond yourself and you forget about what is it that you are fearful about that will prevent you from giving that little bit of help to your neighbor or to your company. It's, it's, it's huge. It might not sound like it's huge because maybe that's not something that you have even um, been accountable for yourself, meaning like you haven't even pat your, patted yourself on the back for being courageous, but you are being courageous by simply even attending this, this um, workshop. You are taking it into your own hands. You're being courageous because you want to keep rising with, with what is going on, despite what is going on. Um, Joy. I mean, joy is the energy level of at 500. And so it goes between zero and a thousand, a thousand being enlightenment, right? Which again, um, we're not, most of us are not enlightened people. Um, maybe the Dalai Lama is, or, you know, um, beautiful people like that. But so joy is 500, um, is at 500. And joy is really, um, a chosen level of, of, of living life. And it's, it's really, for me anyways, um, as, as I, I'm going to um, move into a little bit of a personal experience here with joy, it, is, um, it has been an incredible practice for me to choose joy regardless of anything that's going on around me which means oh yes <laughs> joy is an act of resistance i love it yes 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 it's an act of resistance and and it's it's resisting falling down it's resisting fear it's resisting 
um, lower energy fields that will destroy life, that will destroy us, that will destroy the opportunity to pivot. Joy is a constant practice. And before you joined, um, I was just chatting with Courtney and I stopped and I looked out and I have this beautiful window here of, um, as you can tell, it's a hedge of bamboo trees. And I had at that very moment, a little um, hummingbird that came to me and said, hi, literally at my face level. And hummingbirds are the symbol of joy. And I have this beautiful painting behind me that is all about the hummingbird. And I picked up this painting um, at a moment in my life where I was choosing myself and I was choosing my joy and I was choosing to love me more than what was happening around me. And so it ha it's, so, it's, so, it's so perfect that this little hummingbird came to see me right before we started and it and i had a prayer and i did a meditation before we started because it mattered to me that this is not that i don't step into the fear of i'm not going to make this workshop amazing and i'm not going to you know um, um be as valuable to them and i and i was telling myself stop with that bullshit that's bullshit i mean that's fear actually it's me going into i hope i'm enough i hope i can give enough i hope this workshop will be loved and people will attend it's not about me choosing joy is choosing an energy within that enables you to give more and forget about your fear because ego is fear ego is fear so so ego there is a saying I love that says, um, ego edges God out. And that's exactly that. And whatever God you believe in is irrelevant because God is, is, is believing in God. It's believing in a, in a higher power. It's believing in, in something else. And when you look at um, the people in our lives that we hold in dear um, respect and honor, the people here that I've chosen to represent on this side have known how to access their genius. It's their unique path to their own high performance. It's their unique ability to have access to these energy fields mixed with what it is that makes them feel most alive. I feel most alive when I am connecting connection is one of the it's it's actually the number one of the six human needs um and most most people well all people actually are born to connect right that's part of our human needs and it's probably the one uh human need that we all share as the top human need except that we'll find to uh, we'll find ways to to serve that human need for ourselves in various ways so i'm not going to go into that because it doesn't serve the the, the, genius, um, the genius zone workshop. But if you look at every single one of these people, including um, Harriet Trudman, Trudman, sorry, I never pronounced her name well. I mean, this woman found her own genius by freeing slaves, by doing whatever she could in her power to, slave, to, to free one slave at a time. She didn't have some kind of grandiose scheme and vision and strategy as to how she was going to do that. She just believed that her heart was telling her to do that and she went with that. That is your genius. Your genius is in your heart. It's whatever makes you feel amazing. Whenever you're flowing and you're amazing at what you are giving your energy to, that's your genius. Now, when you can support your genius and expand your genius it's the energy fields it's the energy fields that we're talking about that i'm presenting to you you'll get to 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 keep that um that presentation or buy the book this is the book it's an amazing book um all of these people have created their own high performance uniquely customized to what is out there and customized to what 
the world needs of them. And so, so what you need to remember here is that whatever energy field you choose to have access to, to support your genius, that's when you are in your power. So when in society today we use the word, I'm looking at time because I don't know how, yeah, we're, we're good. Um, power is a word today that is being used very um, loosely, in my opinion, because what power truly is, is that ability for someone to make others feel empowered, to make others feel um, strong, trusting, relatable. It's, it's how people can make you feel. That's power. It's not through force, which is the low end of the spectrum, which repels. And so in the work that I do um, with individuals on a coaching level, for instance, I help people free themselves of whatever limits and whatever patterns they've inherited along their life. And we all inherit of patterns and limits um, from society, from, from our parents, from whatever is around us. If we're not conscious beings and really taking responsibility for what our power is, and how we want to experience our power and how we want others to experience our power, we're being unconscious. And so power is that centeredness that I guide them to reach so that they finally are free to operate from that space. So that, I don't know if it's, um, if it are, are the, you're seeing my, my, you are seeing my uh, slides with this. Oh, here, no, right? I don't know. I'm trying to, because I'm guessing you're probably seeing my. Uh, oh, there. Oh. Sorry, two secs. Can we not do this? There. Okay. So exactly that. It, power is is so loosely used today. It is often, unfortunately, linked as a word to people who do not deserve to be called powerful, that do not deserve to be called powerful because they don't create anything powerful in others, right? It is, and, and I know you can think of politicians, you can think of, again, people around you. Power is, it shouldn't be used for those that use fear and force to influence. Oops, my thing is, okay. So there are a few um, pillars that I've developed in, in the work I do that really help you sustain a genius type of leadership, in fact, right? So in your work, I wanted to, to present this to you because those are a few, um, a few values, it's only eight, but it's really very, um, um, it's eight powerful pillars that your leadership can benefit from that will continue to sustain that genius zone. And, and then we go into those different energy fields that are the ones that can expand it. So in the, 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 in your type of leadership, those, pillars are first first of all purpose and i've included little questions to each of those for you to each of those um, pillars because i feel like oftentimes when people present content um we often we we as the participant listening to people presenting we're like well how do i know how what my purpose is and how do I know I'm being empathetic? Or how do I know that, um, you know, agility, for instance, is an, a pillar of, of performance and leadership? So I added little questions and you're welcome to have them later. I can send you the slide 
um, if you don't receive the, the, the whole um, presentation, it's really up to you. You tell me what you need and I will give you what you need. But um, purpose is really living your why. So without purpose, your genius has no meaning and therefore has no impact on others, right? Empathy is how you relate to others. Empathy is the ability to care for your teams as you are leaders of teams. It's your ability and your choice to care for others around you in the way they need. So it's the ability to listen and, and, and give people around you what they need. You might not be in agreement, but you have to be able to listen and give people what they need in order to retain them, in order to make them happy, in order for them to be in turn productive and feeling powerful on their own for you, for you know the company. So um, how do you relate to people and care for their needs? Vulnerability, huge value in, in terms of leadership. I mean, it is not part of the old leadership, right? It's not a part of the old leadership paradigm. Um, this is why the world is where it is today. And this is why we are, we are looking at what no longer works. When we're not being vulnerable and we're not being truthful with our teams it's, and, and people around us, it's because we're feeling shame and we want to somehow hide a little bit of our truth. So what holds you back from exposing yourself with your truth? I mean, what do you have to lose, right? You might have to lose um, a certain level of, of respect by others that will judge you. So do you want those people to actually go in judgment of you? And if they do, are they really, meaning, are, are they really meant to be part of your team? If you are to take that, that decision in your leadership that you are going to be vulnerable of course there are boundaries in the amount of vulnerability you're not going to disclose your personal intimate details of your relationship with your with your spouse uh, in a in a board meeting i'm not talking about that i'm talking about the choice to be vulnerable is the choice to expose your truth and not go into shame and fear um, of their judgment for something that in the end would um, greatly benefit, if there is an outcome that would greatly benefit the team and you, you need to choose vulnerability. Faith is the, the ability to believe in something else, in something higher and bigger. What makes you the believer of your own vision? How do you actually believe the vision of your company? It's because there is an element of faith and we all need faith in order to continue moving forward. If you lose faith in someone or a relationship or, um, or the vision of a company because the leaders have not communicated to you with vulnerability, perhaps with um, integrity, that's another one we're looking at, you're going to lose faith. So what is it that, that makes you continue to have faith. It's really important to understand how you can create faith in others and how you need faith in yourself in order to follow um, others that are your, your top leaders in, your, in, in, in a company or in life, right? Integrity is, um, is called, in my opinion, it's, it's, I call it a mountain without a top. You can never have enough integrity with yourself, with others, it's that um, value that one can practice, I think, for life is that, is that usually we treat integrity as a value to, for, to give to others, meaning um, do, am, I, am I in integrity with, um, with the vision of the company or am I in integrity with um, this relationship, this coworker? um behavior etc cetera, etc cetera. but first and foremost you need to ask yourself if you are in integrity within yourself are you in integrity with yourself first because that will create integrity on the outside whatever is on the outside is a reflection of what you've chosen inside to hold as true to use as an energy level 
agility is a huge component of what we need right now. So right now you're discovering probably challenges face mm -hmm. the sun is in my face. Um, you're, you're, you're discovering, um, challenges and, and, um, gifts or problems or bumps in your road in whatever er arena of your life that will likely challenge also your integrity and your agility is required in order to pivot. So acceptance, of course, is one of those energy fields that will support your ability to be agile and your ability to not only be agile and pivot, but pivot within integrity of what matters to you and what you know matters to the, to the company. So all of that, I mean, it's identified as, as separate values, but they're all linked, right? And humility is, is um, by Dr. Hawkins actually um, identify, uh, identified as the universal characteristic of genius because we seem to know of the people who are publicly renowned for genius, but guess what? We're all, we all have and own a certain level of genius inside, right? So humility can also act because I've asked myself the question. Just a sec. I have, a, sorry, I, have, I missed that. I, Can my you say again? <laughs> Siri is actually responding to me. That's really funny and I didn't even touch it. Um, I have asked myself that question, whether my level of humility could prevent me from fully embodying what I need to be out there, to live my ambition, to show up in the way that I need to show up in order to reach the results I want. And it's interesting because um, I've, I've had this conversation with a few clients and it just, they just didn't realize that by wanting to be humble, they were actually stopping themselves from stepping up in their leadership because somewhere in there they had an inherited limit and pattern that said to them um if you do this you're not humble so it can work both ways right and presence is is that ability to simply be next to someone and serve them um with all of your attention and intention so that you are in the moment. You're not in the past, you're not in the future, and you are fully able through presence to address what is going on with all of your ability. And so in turn, you can take all of these different um, uh, genius leadership skills or values it's not skills it's more value it probably be <clears throat> requires skills to be practiced but all of those leadership values that are part of the new paradigm today that is being revealed even more in the world today it, they're all values that are quite contradictory to what used to be the old paradigm of leadership based in fear and based in authority or based in force, right? So, so for you to know how to actually expand all of this even more, you need to always ask yourself who you need to be in order to expand your genius, expand that energy, and you need to make extremely conscious choices of who you are being in each moment. I mean, I don't know if you even could bring examples as to what are some of the challenges that you're facing right now so we could make this e even more of a um, time to, you know, collectively find solutions and, and 
identify who as a person and as a leader you need to be in order to rise to the next level in that particular um, problem, challenge, um, confusion. Um, so being aware is going to be the first step for you to identify what's going on around you even more right now. To be still is what the, the, this virus and pandemic is forcing us to be. We need to be still, we need to slow down, we need to find ways during our day where we can get lost into work because right now we have no structure. The whole structure system is completely upside down. We are at home, we are in our own environment, we are in our own comfort, we could easily get lost in work or in play or in anything that you choose. That's really your choice. It really is a choice. But what you need to remember is you need to be still enough in order to know what is going on within. Because when you're in the wheel, the hamster wheel, and that's the doing, it's always being busy. I have a girlfriend who is, um, and it's a joke, so it's a running joke with her. So even if she was listening, eventually um, she would recognize herself and I'm not talking in her back, but she used to tell me all the time, whenever I would text, call, reach out, and Lord knows she's in Montreal on top of that. I'm in LA, right? So I would reach out and she'd be like, too busy, I'm just so busy and running and running. And every time I would talk, finally, finally, finally talk with her, she'd be giving me the exact same speech. I'm so busy and nah, nah, nah. And I'm like, one day I just cut her off. I'm like, okay, let me tell you who you are right now, who you're being in this moment. You're busy, you're running like a chicken without its head cut off. Blah, 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 blah. And I gave her back her whole spiel. And then she was like, she paused. And I said, that's who you're being. Is it helpful to you? Is it is it, con, con, is it conducive to the results that you want to experience in your life? She was like, oh shit, you're right. No, it isn't. And so it became a running joke. joke and, but that's what life has become if we are not conscious of the fact that we need to take ownership of what we're experiencing and be still enough, be present enough to know and own what is really going on then you know you have a choice do you want to keep this you want to let go of that do you need this relationship or this friendship in your life no doesn't feel good to me anymore but i was so busy that i forgot that i have a choice to be honest enough with that person and say you know what i don't want to talk about this right now or it doesn't feel good to my heart to not ever talk with one another because it just doesn't it's not the way i understand friendship doesn't or with a, a you know a co-worker or someone who is leading um perhaps your department be still enough with what is coming up right now for you so you have courage to speak your truth and say what needs to be said it will liberate you it will liberate the person and you know what if it comes with a pure intention of of making the relationship better i am i am fairly certain that this person will feel it and will come up with either encouragement accolades solutions for it to become better together it's we're, we're not meant to be functioning in autonomous ways meaning autonomous not without people we are not dependent beings or independent beings we're all interdependent we need each other collectively to create more especially right now so be more vulnerable and be more grateful for what's really happening because guess what there's always worse the law of relativity says that you know what your your neighbor right next door to you we live in a very big city i mean i moved to la two and a half years ago and 
it's a gorgeous city and it's so spread out. <laughs> it's so spread out. And it means that we're not building communities as much, right? So it's good for a pandemic, pandemic spread because we're, we're further from one another. We can go out more um, and not be on top of one another like New Yorkers. Um, so we can be grateful for that. But find, find gratitude in whatever is going on right now because that really will save you and make you feel good for what you're experiencing. And further than that, um, it also will help you want to give because when you give, you forget about yourself. You forget about, you forget about your small problems or big problems. When you give of your love and you give of your, of even your gratitude, it just, it, it has magic. It's a magical effect. And lastly, I want to end on this one thing, um, or this one, um, way to expand is as you're becoming clear and clear with who you are, with what's coming up for you right now, with what you want in your life, with your own genius, as you're becoming more and more clear with your truth and how you can pivot to benefit yourself, your life, your relationships, your business, the world, you need to be really selective. You need to select your energy field. You need to select who you want to hang out with. You need to select the fact that power, that proximity, sorry, is power. So whoever you're next to or whatever you're next to is power. And power in the sense of what I've described before. Power with, with the principles, uh, the core principles of the levels of, of consciousness, the core principles of those energy fields. So when, whenever you don't feel good about something or someone, be truthful to yourself, be selective. And it doesn't have to go through a major fight or major confrontation. Just be aware that perhaps it's just someone or something that will simply fall out with grace, not friction, not force, not confrontation and anger, it will simply fall out of your own bubble, of your own zone, because it's no longer aligned with the way that you choose to feel. And that's it. <laughs> so I would love for you to um, to let me know if you have questions. So I'm going to, where do I go? Do we have chats? We have all kinds of, oh, yay, we have great. Um, so let me review some of these questions, if there are any. So some managers, it happens. Uh, we often say to know where you have, we, you have shame is to see where you judge others. That's from Lizzie. Mm -hmm. Yes, love that. Yeah, because judgment, judgment is toxic for ourselves first and foremost and, and to others. So of course, I so love that, um, that association. It's, it, it, makes it, it makes it even clearer on the way to identify um, shame. Uh, Tatiana, Anna has a question at the bottom. A lot of these were just chats along the way as you were talking. We were just kind of chatting. So I think she has probably a more relevant question at the end since I know we're, we're over right now. I don't know if you want to okay. jump. Yeah. Yeah. So the question was just like, how does it work when you have kind of multiple of these characteristics at play at once and some of them are lower vibration and some are higher? Is it just kind of the lens you choose to... Feeling empathy and the most. <laughs> oh, you mean um, experiencing um, um, a dichotomy, basically, in those two? Yeah, exactly. So when there's like kind of both yeah. sides of the scale, like yeah. But I think that's normal, right? Because um, the first, the first, um, the first thing I would want to address is the fact that first of all, if you're aware that it's happening then that's kudos to you. So 
first is awareness then then it's really sitting with it and being still to see what is best aligned with you and best aligned with what you're creating is it is it is if it's a situation for work for instance um you know you have to obviously take into account um the mission the mission um, of the company you have to take into account uh if it's someone with, who is a superior to you um you know there is a lot to take into account but if you're still enough or if you're still long enough i think that clarity comes as to what your next step is does that answer at all or give you some kind of direction or do you want to give a specific um, example as to how you've experienced those two i don't know that it's a specific example but that's i think what's felt really tiring is kind of you know like feeling as a single person like kind of things that are on both sides of that spectrum and really understanding like how that vibration how that interacts when you are kind of feeling different things on different parts of that energy spectrum. Mm. How it interacts, and you said as a single person. What is yeah, that like I, it's not, you know, kind of within a context of a sing situation. It's like within myself. Mm. It's right. strange to have both okay. fear and empathy and try to, I think that's where maybe some of the exhaustion is coming from. <laughs> well, yeah. And I think that your, your, um, your question is a great question because I think that that is exactly what is happening for most of us right now is we are feeling out or thinking about all of those different um, opposite ends of the spectrum and we are forced to be still enough so that we move closer to what resonates the most for us, for you individually, we, as you experience and practice stillness, and how do you practice stillness? I mean, it's it's just sitting with yourself, whether it's in a bath or, or you know, if if you're meditating, if that's a practice of yours, or if you take a long walk. I mean, I know I have two dogs that allow me to go for walks all the time, which really is helpful because I'll I will either. Um, silently experience the walk with my dogs or I will put on a podcast that feels nourishing to me and through the podcast and through what I'm listening and it just it leads me to smoothly and, and um, softly or with grace I would say go into a direction that resonates the most for me yeah I think like what I'm taking from that is be still <laughs> one that's feeling especially like friction between those different characteristics. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, the friction is exactly what will also prevent you. It's resistance, right? Friction is resistance. So there is something also that you're resisting in, in that moment. So what is it that you're resisting? Um, use the questions from the... Um, the values of leadership that was to to help you move closer to your own answers and so but resistance is is you know resistance is simply showing you where is the fear so what's the deeper level of fear what are you fearing most in that in that dichotomy that you experience I also wonder how much in that, like, we're tapping into the collective fear that we see and that's put around us versus our own, right? Like, if there was, if, if we didn't know constantly seeing, like, the sickness rates and the death rates and you can't go here and everybody's out of school and yeah. whatever, yeah. Right? it's like constant yeah. change and chaos and the yeah. actions are out of, it feels like fear, which is really about, like, keeping everybody healthy. And so sometimes I feel like my feelings similar and I like are bouncing back and forth. And sometimes I'm like, that's actually, I don't actually feel scared right now for my health because I'm, I'm staying home and I'm you know, doing all these things. But then you get these moments of fear, like, oh my God, the world's going to end, which is just, it's kind of, cause that's the tone. Well, and that's why I'm saying be selective because there is no way that within this energy of fear 
collective fear. There is no way if we're not being selective as to what we watch, what we listen to, who we're next to, there's no way you're, you're going to be um, um, permeable to the collective fear. You need to be selective. I, my mom is in France, and so I speak with my mom on a daily basis, and I'm making those conversations shorter and shorter, even though I love her and I care about her and she's worried about me. I'm not worried too much about her because she's really safe, and you know, but she calls and goes, oh my God, you're in a catastrophic state in California. And I'm like, what? Where did you hear that? She's glued to her TV. She is just listening to all the news out there. And some journalists said that about the, about the states and about California. I have no idea who, but she went into it and got drawn into, into that. And so to, to your point, Lizzie, really important we are selective and we we do this out of love for ourselves knowing who we are and how easily we can be influenced because all of this this is something that um nobody can fully be a master at right i practice this on an ongoing basis every day and some days are worse than others and yesterday i had a really no yesterday or the day before i had a really bad day everything was upside down in my opinion, I mean, I worked on a document that I lost and I was just like, you know, I mean, it was like one thing after another. And because I'm such an empath, I can also add the collective energy of everybody else. And when I go into that spiral of my own little tunnel of frustrations or potential little fears or, and, it adds to everything else. And if I don't practice this, it's easy to lose it. It's a never ending practice. It's our journey, right? Was that helpful? I hope. How do you, how, Anna, how can you, what would be your um, main takeaway? I think that is helpful. I think, you know, sometimes the hardest things to do are the most simple oftentimes and so i think that answer of just being selective and being still is you know mm -hmm. the perfect answer it's just really hard to do <laughs> yeah and or maybe you make it easier for you maybe you find ways that feel easier for you because the more we say it's hard then the harder it's gonna be you know like that language has an impact on how you feel about it. So make it simple. And often, you know, like take breaks during the day, go in the sun and just bathe into the sun for five minutes and just absorb and receive all that beautiful energy that nature has for us right now. I mean, this virus is about nature saying, you've gone too far. You're so into your achievement and your doing and your ego and hardship and suffering and the shadow side of patriarchy. I mean, all of that is in one big ball. And nature is saying, you know what? I'm going to impose this and see how you do with it, <laughs> you know? So appreciate small moments because those practices are great, but you have to make it simple and easy for you. Customize it to you. Customize it to your own genius. It's exactly that. So. That's great advice, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Are we, do we have any other um, questions that I might have missed or? Mm. Mm. 